Hey guys and welcome back to Newcastle's final match before the international break as we take on Brighton here yeah, today at the Amex. I remember coming down last season, no no draw, these guys played us off the park, supporting today in a battle of Champions League football versus Europa League football by the way. I mean, a couple of seasons ago this was like a, a relegation but I remember playing these guys back in the Championship all the way in 2016 and now it's a Champions League side against a Europa League side who've got two very good draws. I think Brighton fans will be buzzing as well. I mean, for me, this morning, woke up, I booked my flights to Milan, I booked them to Dortmund, I booked them to Paris. What a time to be a Newcastle fan. And this is going to be a real test of where both squads are. I feel like Newcastle won this game due to the fact we've already lost two of our first three matches. Yes, OK, it was against Liverpool and Manchester City, but we had to get at least one point today. If we lose three out of four going into the international break, I think it's going to be a bit tricky for us. So we have to do it. But anyway, guys, if you're new around here, make sure you get down there, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button as well. Without further ado, let's head over to the Amex and speak to some great fans. <laughs> We are now joined by Brighton content creator Luke. Welcome, hope things are going well. It is a lovely Saturday night here in Brighton. Big match. We've got Champions League opposition versus Europa League opposition. I mean, it's a bit mad seeing that in any yeah. castle versus Brighton fixture, but how are we feeling about this game? Uh, look, it's going to be difficult. It's really hard to predict a match like this. It's going to be so 50 50. Obviously, you Newcastle fans just come off a loss. Haven't really had the best start, you know, but I think you guys will pick it back up and I hope it's not today. I hope we can get a result, but I'm going to be fair to you Newcastle fans. I like Newcastle. I really, really do. I respect them. We both have come up the rankings. I think today is going to be a one all um, because I just think it's hard to predict who's going to take this, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go over one all. I think we're both going to take a point here. Um, but yes, hopefully, uh, hopefully it does go well in our favour, but I will take one all out of this. And I'm sure you'll be happy with the Europa League draw. I just wanted to mention both the draws actually because, well, Newcastle, we're, we're taking on Dortmund, AC Milan, and PSG in the same group. It's mental. I think, I mean, your group as well for the Europa League is a pretty good group to be first. I just want to ask you your general thoughts on both of the groups. I think we've both been very unlucky. You know, we both had very tough groups. I mean, you guys are the babies going into uh, the Champions League, and we are going into the Europa League. And I think, you know, we've had a pretty tough time getting these teams, but. They are exciting away days to go to and um, obviously I know you'll be going to a lot of them, I will be. So I am excited but I'm also worried at the same time. So yes, I, I would probably rate it a good solid like 6 out of 10, probably out of, you know, difficulty but you know out of excitedness going into you know these you know uh south of france going into greece and going into amsterdam as well i'm very excited for it so you know out of excitement it's going to be a good away days but i am worried about it yeah and finally just how do you think brighton get on this season i mean it's always a big ask i think when teams get into european competition a lot of teams statistically always tend to drop off do you think that's going to be a case for brighton or do you think you still maintain a consistent position Again, it's a tough one. Uh, I think for you guys, you you know, you don't really quite know how it's going to go. I think it all depends on how far we get in Europa League uh, and sort of how many injuries come across as well. Uh, I think our squad depth is quite good now. We've just signed, uh, well, on a loan for a year, and Su Fati, which we're all raving about, completely raving about. So it's going to be interesting. I think I'll take eighth position. Um, anything eighth or ninth or higher, I would take, but it's gonna be difficult, it all depends. I wouldn't mind if we ended up like 10th, but we did well in Europa League, I wouldn't mind, but um, I don't think we'll do as well in the uh, Premier League because we have Europe. Hi, my name's Alfie, might see you guys first. And what are we thinking for the match today against Newcastle? Uh, I mean, the way we played on Saturday wasn't the greatest, but I mean, football's football, isn't it? So anything can happen. I'm sure you're excited after seeing that Europa League draw. I mean, wow, Brighton have got some good teams. I bet I mean, you're buzzing for it. Yeah, I mean, it's one enough time opportunity, so might as well make the most of it. And what a team to pull. Ajax, I mean, just completely shot. I know. You had much chance to watch Newcastle last season. You got any thoughts on us as a club? Uh, well, I watch you in the American series, and I mean, Got that lucky last minute goal, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, yeah. we, we were battling it out in the championship, so either first or second, we messed it up on that last day and you came out better. Look at that, <laughs> look at it. So we are joined here by... Joel, Davide, Samuel. And what team do you all support? AC Milan. AC, AC Milan fans. 
So now, um, I'm sure you've seen the Champions League draw a couple of days ago. Newcastle is one of the teams that will be playing AC Milan. I booked my flight this morning, literally in about two weeks' time. So that's why I wanted to start things off. I mean, how excited are you? Dortmund, PSG, Newcastle, are the teams you will be playing? It'll be pretty, it'll be pretty hard uh, and uh, it'll be an emotion to see Tonali back to San Siro, you know. Uh, it's a great player and uh, we, we love him, so it's uh, going to, to be very, very emotional. So you, are you trying to scout Newcastle out today? I mean, what, what are you doing down in Brighton for this no, one? I'm just going to see a Premier League match, you know, uh, no enemies. No enemies, well, it would be great to hear anyway. I've never been to the San Siro before, I can't wait to get there in a couple of weeks' time. I just want to ask a bit a little bit about Tenardi. I mean, so far he's scored in his debut for Newcastle against Aston Villa. Is there anything you, you want to say about Tenardi? Uh, it's a very good player and uh, he'll put uh, every, for every match the, the heart uh, in the field. So. A lot of passion, yes. A lot of passion. We play with great passion. He loves the... the, the the game. The game. So that's really very, very good player. Good player. So uh, it's JJ Charm on TikTok. I have 800k over there. So uh, yeah, go and check me out. Absolutely, go check him out. I'm Henry. I'm just his mate. Uh, is it just his mate? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I'm seeing you all dressed up for the occasion. Not bad, I mean, hey? it's a good piece that. Look at that. The the Champions League draw. Um, yeah, I think. I think we're going to start off with that. Haven't we? I mean, we are. Yeah. Of course, in the Champions League now, we have got the group of death three unbelievable teams there. What are your thoughts on them? I oh, mean, it's, it's just crazy because obviously you've got the Tanani factor and the Botman factor of the AC Milan tie, you've got the Dortmund yellow wall, and the PSG you've got Mbappe. So there's a, a massive factor in every three of those games. Um, I've seen the schedule as well, San Siro first up. I just think it's crazy. Like, I wanted a group of death, I wanted the biggest clubs possible with the best fan bases, and I just I can't believe that we got it in the first time round. No, no. Yeah, absolutely spot on. I think PSG, Dortmund, Milan got three of the best away firms in, in the world. So it'd be great to see if we can new, new possible bring some of those fantastic away fans all the way over to into Europe. It's been a long time coming. So fingers crossed, it's three tough games, but still, I reckon they can get a result easily. Oof. Where do you think we can finish? Do you think we can actually get first or second? Um, so I had this conversation with my friends on Twitter. I think we can get around nine to 10 points, which I think will be enough to qualify for the last 16. So I think PSG will win the group just for the Mbappe, Mbappe factor personally. But I think you look at those home games, I think we could easily win two out of those three and get on the road. We, you look at what we've done against Arsenal, Man United on the road, we've got points there. So yeah, I think we'll get second in the group, probably qualify to be fair. So. Yeah, do you know what? I agree. I think actually, maybe first isn't a bad option. Milan have lost a couple of key players. They rely on Leal quite heavily. Dortmund haven't exactly been the team that they've been in recent years with Haaland and O'Bellingham this season. Uh, and Mbappe, look, Mbappe and PSG look a shadow of themselves. Uh, at the moment, PSG, there's no Messi, no Neymar. I mean, let's not forget, if you look at the results, they've drawn against considerably lower teams like L'Oreal this season already. They just do not let themselves. Asensio and Dembele just aren't replacements for Messi and Neymar. So. I'd love to see how, how the boys can go and do if we go away at home. I think St James is going to be a really hard place for them to come and play. So let's just hope we can make it a game for them and, and, and take the game to them. One thing I do have to say in regards to Brighton and their fans is I absolutely love coming down to the Yamex. It's so peaceful. You come down here, you enjoy yourself. You can see in the background, everyone's having a great time. You get your drinks, your food before the match. You're enjoying what is a, a gorgeous day. Just in front of me actually is like a picnic area. So you know we ever see this at a football ground, but it's just something about Brighton where it's, everything's just so peaceful, there's nothing kind of going on in a negative way, you can just enjoy yourself and just get ready for a game of football. I think in regards to fan bases in the Premier League, it's probably the most approachable so I can go over, say hello to a bunch of people, it's quite quite nice. So yeah, I thought I'd give credit where credit is due because I do actually like coming down to Brighton away, it's always a good experience. And the football is going to be class today, so I'm hoping that we can get the job done. Jordan is not injured, I thought he would be injured, but no, uh, Eddie Howe's either misled the press conference or we've just kept it a bit quiet now Jordan's in the squad I think it's a big keeper to have I'm hoping we can get a win uh, a point wouldn't be bad but I definitely think with the context of this season so far getting three points there is crucial in my eyes
seen a mockup. Ever 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 seen a Well, there we have it, half time here at the MX Brighton 1 Newcastle 0. I actually think the first 20 minutes or so haven't been so bad, but once they scored, the game's completely flipped in their favour. I mean, what? I just don't get it. Again, which is so frustrating. I'm just. I feel painful watching some of these games. I mean, I'm just so annoyed. But Newcastle's defensive record is terrible, by the way. We must have had about like, two clean sheets the last 20 matches or something. I mean, statistically, we are conceding every single game now. So that means that Newcastle now have to score two goals every time they play. And the problem is, in a match like this, we aren't taking our chances. It's just hard to score two goals. So that's just the, the problem so far this season. It's just. I don't know what to say about it. Again, it's like last week, we're wasting chances, we're not taking opportunities, and Brighton, I mean, their goal, I, I thought it was Nick Post, to be fair. Uh, terrible kick by him, he's done well to make a couple of saves after that, but ultimately, he, it's been a butterfly effect from his kick, so, so far, uh, it's not been good. Second half has to be better, though. Uh, just like last week, Eddie Howe has took Sandro Tonali off. Don't understand it at all. It's uh, 2 now. Give them all the space in the world, give them all the time. They're gonna score a second goal. Everything's just self inflicted for most time and time and time again. Uh, uh, I don't think Newcastle will be really complaining, but we gave them the goal.
This is just laughable at this point, though. Chances going now, it's just so embarrassing for us. I mean, Nick Post has been wrong sided there. Dino scored that one with a 3 0 crime. I mean, wow, look how we had to see that job, by the way, wow. We've got five minutes to score two. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen, to be honest. I am now back inside the hotel room. That is what everyone loves and hates about football. And what is a painful day for Newcastle is a glorious day for Brighton. Fair play to Brighton and all those fans, by the way. They deserved everything today. We deserved nothing. That was the difference on the pitch. One team came in to win. One team came in not to lose. That was our mentality. I just, I'm so complex, by the way, we've started this season off. Yes, okay, Manchester City, Liverpool... Brighton off three hard games on paper. City away, okay, we lost one new, could have done a little bit more. Yes, I'm a little bit disappointed. Liverpool was a complete shambles. We were one nil up, battered the team and still lost because we couldn't take our chances and we switched off the last 10 minutes. Brighton today, first 15, 20 minutes to start well. Then we switch off again. It's the exact same situation. Liverpool were not learning from our mistakes. And a team that, let's be fair, on paper, got a very good squad, uh, deserved to be where they are. But Newcastle, I would still say, I think, have a better squad on paper, if I had to be honest, without trying to, I guess, to upset anyone. And that's how we play. We just got battered all match long. I mean, what, an 18-year-old's got a hat-trick, Evan Ferguson, fair play to him. But in our point of view, what are we doing? <sighs> Defensively, we're poor. Going forward, not taking chances. So what can Newcastle do? It's just so frustrating for fans that are travelling across to Brighton, the longest possible away game. Listen, my mind is flustered. I am battered in this bedroom. <laughs> it's not been a great time. Um, I've already just recovered from bloody food poisoning. Uh, I mean, thankfully, it doesn't seem to be as bad as it originally was, but I was awful yesterday. I've already just recovered from that, and now I feel even worse after we bloody lost to Brighton. So 
Uh, everything's been a nightmare on this trip. I, I want to forget about this one. Our next away game, this is the truth. Our next away game is the San Siro when we take on AC Milan. That's why I'm so triggered today. That was our last possible opportunity in an away match. Just the kind of test that wore us. And that's how we play. We're going to this bloody San Siro in Italy next. The AC Milan will eat us alive. We dare to play like that down there. It, it will not end well at all. It has to be over this international break a wake up call. We have to come back better for Brentford at St James's Park. I, listen, I love this club. I, I absolutely adore this club. I love everything about this club. That's why I'm so triggered all the time because I want us to do the best we possibly can be. And so far, it just feels like we've overachieved based on last season because of what's going on here. We're so much better than how we're playing at the minute. It upsets me, it angers me. We need to do better than this because, I mean, it has been disappointing. That's just the truth behind it. We will get tortured in the Champions League if we dare play like that. That's just the simple truth behind it. But listen, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Fair play to Brighton deserved everything on the day. And for us, we walk back empty-handed again. We have to change. But yeah, take care, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below, and I will see you all in the next one.